In order to quantify the amount of clustering or the amount of spatial pattern in our point pattern, we are going to use a technique called quadrat analysis. With quadrat analysis, we place a uniform grid over the study area. So in red, we've placed our, our grid. Each cell of this grid, so this is a cell, is going to be called a quadrat, kind of like the word quadrant. Now let's think about um, how many points fall in each of these quadrats. When the data are clustered, we're going to find that some of the quadrats have a lot of points in them, and some are going to have very few points. So for example, here we have a lot of points, and here we have not a lot of points at all. And in some of these cells, we just have kind of an average number of points. So, when, so probably we can use this quadrat analysis to determine that this data are clustered. What about if the data were regularly distributed? Well, in that case, and I can bring up the pattern, imagine we place a quadrat grid over this. Okay. So what do we see over here? Basically, each quadrat in this point pattern, each or each quadrat in this grid contains roughly the same number of observations. And when we see that, then we know that probably our data are uniformly distributed, either uniformly or dispersed is the other word. And then when the data are random, we're going to find that uh, something in between. It's not going to be uh, a lot of variation between quadrats, but it's not going to be perfectly even as well. So here we have three different point distributions sitting in a 10, uh, a, a ten quadrat grid. So let's let, we're going to use the letter M to denote this, the number of grid cells, the number of quadrats used in our quadrat analysis. So the first point distribution is random. So you see some with an average amount of points, some with fewer, some with more. So random. The second one is uniform. So all of the quadrats have exactly two points in them. And the third one is clustered. We've got 10 points in these two center quadrats and zero points everywhere else. In all three of these cases, we have 20 points. Okay, so we've got 20 points distributed in three different ways. So in quadrat analysis, the first step is to place the grid over the study area. Next, we count the number of points occurring within each quadrat. Then we're going to calculate the mean of the cell count. So we are going to take n, which is the number of points, divided by m, which is the number of quadrats. And that's going to give us the mean cell count. Then we're going to calculate the variance of the cell count. So the variance is going to be composed of um, the sum right, of xi minus x bar over m minus 1. And here, uh, xi is the number of points occurring in quadrat i. Number of points in quadrat i. And x bar is this over here. It's the mean cell count. So it's the, the mean number of points, it's the average number of points per quadrat. And m is the number of quadrats. Okay, so this is just the normal calculation of variance where the variable that we're calculating uh, the variance for is the number of points in each quadrat. And then we're going to produce something called the variance to mean ratio, which is just the variance s squared, this thing that we just calculated over here, s squared over x bar. 
And we're going to use the, the, the VMR, the variance to mean ratio, in a statistical test.